Okay, this is a continuation of the previous work we did with this pedigree about ABO blood types. That one ran a little long, so we'll break it into chunks. But I've kept all the information we have about genotypes in this family, and we were able to find most but not all of the genotypes. There are a few blanks that we'll just have to live with for now. But wait, they give us some new information now. Individuals 2-1 and 2-2, this couple, have a second child who we'll put in the space they gave to us. They don't say what their gender is, and you normally use a diamond for unknowns like that. And they say, after you see the blood type from this, you immediately know that both parents are IA little i. What blood type is the kid? Well, if they're both IA little i, what could we know that would fill in two spaces at once? If we knew, let me just pick a color that I haven't used yet, we'll use the pink. Let's say, if we knew that both of these were little eyes. The only way we could know that for sure is if we saw a kid who, like their cousins, was blood type O. Because then we'd say they had to get one of these little eyes from each of their parents, which means each parent must have one, and that would cover both of those gaps. If their blood type was A, that wouldn't tell us much of anything. We'd say, well, the A could have come from either parent and that doesn't give us any new information. But knowing that each parent has little i, we already knew the a part. If we gained the new information that they both had little i's, the easiest way to explain that is that they had a type O child. So that person's blood type is O, to finish off number four. And Using examples from the pedigree, describe some of the limitations that apply to human genetic analysis. Um, so what are some reasons why we weren't able to fill in all the gaps in here? Uh, there are a few of these. Uh, one would be that humans tend to have relatively few offspring. A lot of people have zero, one, or two kids, and that isn't enough to do statistical analysis. If we were like fruit flies and produced millions, not millions, dozens or hundreds of offspring in our lives, then you could easily do some number crunch and use that to figure out an individual's genotype, but that doesn't happen with people. With, uh, with some kinds of livestock, you can do techniques like test crosses, where you take an animal and get it to mate with a highly recessive individual, and you can figure out its genotype from that. But humans do not want to be test crossed, so that isn't an option. And uh, there are also issues like uh, right to privacy, where you don't, a human does not have to tell you what their blood type is. And if you ask, they still don't have to tell you. You can't just draw their blood and test it if you're curious. So at any point in a genetic analysis, you can run into a spot where you'd, you'd be really helpful to know this person's blood type, but they've died or they don't, they just aren't interested in discussing that with you. And so there's information that you, aren't allowed to obtain. So those are a few I can think of off the top of my head, and maybe you can come up with some others for why it's harder to learn about human genetics than about genetics of some other creature.